everybody. Welcome to another stud story. Uh, this one today, I think I'm going to call uh, Wrestling's Greatest Day. Uh, and uh, it is, I'm sure, one of the biggest uh, events or biggest days any wrestler ever had in the history of wrestling. And it started on uh, Saturday, September 1st, 1973. I was living in West Palm Beach. I'd been wrestling a whole lot in St. Louis during, the, during that year and the year after that. And uh, I was uh, going to St. Louis the morning, Saturday morning. I had wrestled in Fort Lauderdale on Friday night. I got up at four o'clock in the morning to catch a six o'clock flight out of West Palm Beach, Florida, where I lived. I'm going to fly to St. Louis, which is probably an easily a thousand miles, maybe more. Uh, so I'm going to have a thousand mile flight in the morning very early to get there for television. Uh, usually I worked in St. Louis on the Friday night and I would have been there for TV, but uh, for some reason I, I ended up being booked in Florida that Friday night. And so I get up at uh, four o'clock in the morning, I get myself on an airplane, West Palm Beach, we go to, to Atlanta, change planes in Atlanta, I get into St. Louis. Uh, which is in, in Central Time. It's an hour earlier than the West Palm Beach time and Eastern Time Zone. So uh, it was about uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, they took me down to the uh, TV station. Uh, and, I, and I had a, an escort that took me actually because I didn't have, they didn't want me to catch a cab. Uh, we were, they were pretty uh, big sticklers about making sure you got there. So they had a policeman pick me up and take me in a police car. Uh, to the TV station. I uh, found out when I got there, normally it was two televisions that you do in one day. Uh, and what's going to happen on this day? I guess I should go ahead and get to the point here and then we'll explain it. Uh, I'm going to set a record that's never been broken. I'm, off, I'm, I'm absolutely sure of it. I'm going to wrestle three world champions in a matter of eight hours. And I don't think uh, that ever happened anywhere else on earth. I might actually wrestle four times, but I'm going to wrestle three of those are going to be world champions. So uh, I'm on my way to St. Louis. I don't know who I'm wrestling. I get there, and normally it's two TVs. Uh, Pat O'Connor, former NWA world champion, was uh, there handling the book. And uh, he says, Ron, uh, we got three shows today. And uh, I said, well, how many am I on? He said, you're on all three. And I said, uh, Wow, you know, I'm thinking, well, you know, televisions are not like our shows. They're, they're, they're in these hot studios, these, just burning down lights on top of you. You're going to sweat a lot. You got to work a little faster because you're on TV. You can't take your time like you would in a house match. So it's a little bit, uh, it's, it's hard. It's difficult, more difficult. So he says, uh, you're on all three of them, Ron. And I go, well, well okay, uh, who, who am I with? which made a lot of difference. I mean, if you're gonna wrestle three TVs in a, night, in a matter of three hours, uh, you need to know kind of uh, who you're dealing with uh, real quick like. And he says, uh, well, your first match is with uh, Gene Kaninsky. Now, Gene Kaninsky at this point was a former world heavyweight champion. And I was like, well, anybody that ever worked with Gene Kaninsky can go, wow. Ron, that's a, that's a struggle right there in itself. That's a good enough match to, to spend the whole three hours and to, and to be a TV. You're lucky if, uh, if, if you can get through that, that match with Gene Kaninsky. And then I said, yeah, okay, uh, who's in the second one? He said, Johnny Valentine. Johnny Valentine, I don't know, fans out there, you look up Johnny Valentine, you see some of his matches. Johnny Valentine was one of the stiffest and toughest wrestlers that ever lived. In my opinion, he should have been a world champion himself. And I'm like, wow, Gene Kaninsky and Johnny Valentine. Well, who's in the third one, I ask uh, Pat. And he says, uh, Terry Funk. And now Terry's going to be champion, but he's not champion at this point, but he will be in the future. So I got two, two world champions out of three matches on three TVs that are all going to take place in less than three hours. So. I go out with uh, Gene Kaninsky and uh, we have a 20 minute match. I say, how long are these matches? And he says, Ron, they're all 20 minutes. I need 20 minutes in all of them. I was like, whoa, man, it's, it's hard to work a 20 minute match with uh, Gene Kaninsky. 
and it's very difficult with Johnny Valentine, and it's uh, it's just about as bad with Terry Funk. So there was no good news for me here. You know, this is going to be one heck of an afternoon. So uh, I get in the ring with uh, Gene Kaninsky. We wrestle 20 minutes, and then I come out of there. I'm pretty blown up. Uh, Gene Kaninsky's the type of guy that like to really grind you, man. He caught a lot of big high spots. He liked to do these uh, flying head scissors and the running flying head scissors, all these crazy moves. So uh, that was a difficult uh, 20 minutes. And I had about uh, 45 minutes to rest before the next TV match, which is in the next show. They're going to do three complete shows. So in the next one is with Johnny Valentine. I'd wrestled Johnny Valentine probably 100 times in Florida in uh, 1972, 1973. Uh, tremendous worker. They always loved to wrestle an hour. He, he, he didn't never, he never had a match under 45 minutes because he used to say, you got to tell the story. I got to tell the story. And uh, so we had 20 minute match and I mean, he grabbed me and he pounded me. I pounded him. I was accustomed to working with him and he liked it. He wanted me to pound him. So I get through with the second of these TV matches. Uh, it's another 20 minutes. I go to the dressing room and I'm, I'm pretty shot. I mean, I'm very tired at this point. I, and I'm not having a long break between matches and uh, about 45 minutes after that one, it's time for the third one you know, with Terry Funk. So when I go get ready to go to the ring, uh, the, uh, the announcer says, uh, Ron, uh, you got an interview immediately after the match. Why are you still in the ring? And I'm like, whoa, you know, that puts a whole new new, uh, new light on the whole thing, man. It makes it so much more difficult when you've got to go back and do that at the end of another 20 minute Broadway on television and all those lights. So Terry and I have a great match um, and, uh, and I'm totally, I'm totally gone. Uh, probably uh, halfway through the match at the 10 minute mark, I'm, I'm, I'm really blown up big time. Uh, but I still keep struggling, I still keep fighting. You got to, you have to do it. Uh, and I get to the time and it run out and uh, I'm hardly able to breathe at all. And uh, so he rolls out of the ring. It's a time limit, the 30 minute, 20 minute time limit. They rang the bell. Uh, nobody's beat me all day long. I've wrestled these three great competitors and nobody's beat me, but I haven't beat any of them either. But uh, I've, I've got the interview to do. And then I'm in the ring and I'm, I, I can't hardly catch my breath and the announcer jumps in the ring immediately after Terry jumps out the other side and he sticks the microphone in my face and he's, and he, I know who my opponent is on the next Friday that I'm gonna be in St. Louis and that's who I'm plugging. And I start talking. And uh, I don't know if uh, how many of you out there have ever been blown up enough that you get sick, you know. So at the end of this, during the middle of this interview, about halfway through, and it's a two minute interview, about a minute in, I feel this vomit coming up. Uh, and I've still got to talk. I've still got to do the deal. And I'm choking it down because I don't want to, the last thing I want to do is vomit in the ring in an interview uh, and then say I'm going to beat the hell out of somebody two Fridays later, it, you know. So, uh, so I managed to make it to the end of the two minute interview and the studio was built that has a staircase that goes upstairs to the dressing room above, which is on the second floor. And as soon as I finished that interview, the clock stops, I jump out onto the floor and I race up the stairs. Well, I don't make it all the way up to the top of the stairs, I vomit on the stairs. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty embarrassed about that. Gotta go back and clean it up myself, you know? And uh, uh, so, as if that wasn't enough, and that would be a world record, I'm sure, that, that, but I happened to be wrestling again that night. And I'm wrestling in Tampa, and actually Clearwater, I mean in St. Petersburg, in the uh, Bayfront Coliseum. And uh, I'm wrestling in that match against a guy that's going to be another NWA world champion, and uh, that was Dusty Rhodes. So I have wrestled these three guys starting about uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 
uh, three o'clock, I'd say, Eastern time. Uh, and then I, I jump on the plane. I have to be taken back by the same policeman because there's no way I can make it to the airport in time to catch a plane if he doesn't turn those lights on and uh, he runs me just like he's got an emergency. And he gets me to the airport in time for me to get on the plane and fly to Tampa. I get off in Tampa about seven o'clock. Matches are starting at eight. And uh, I have to catch myself a cab and, and uh, be taken across the bay, Tampa Bay, out of Franklin Bridge uh, into the St. Petersburg uh, Coliseum. And uh, I'm in a, a man tag. It's my brother and I. And I can't remember who our partners were, but we are against Dusty Rhodes, uh, Dick Slater, and uh, the two Samoans that were the tag team champions in Florida at that point. Uh, eight man tag, but uh, that match again, there was again was with another world champion, the NWA world champion. So in a period, basically I spent the whole day after that match, I was dragging for sure. Managed to get back to the plane and get a flight from Tampa into West Palm Beach, got into West Palm Beach about midnight, left there at 6 a.m. that morning, get back there at midnight that night. and. Uh, and then in the course of the day, I wrestled three world champions in about an eight hour period of time. And I don't think that anybody will ever match that record again anywhere on earth. I, I defy any wrestler to come along and, uh, and uh, prove that he wrestled three world champions in that period of time. And uh, I think uh, that's a record for sure. And uh, I think it's one of wrestling's probably greatest records. And, uh, and uh, I, not, I didn't even realize that I had done this myself until I was uh, doing Studcast, and I was in 1973, and I looked at that date in my book, and I saw the three guys I wrestled in, in St. Louis, and then I saw that I wrestled that night in uh, St. Petersburg, and I realized that I probably set an all-time record for any wrestler. And uh, thank you all very much as usual for your support. And I uh, hope you enjoy these uh, stud stories. And uh, I'll be with, back with another one for you.